Thank you for coming for this session. Uh, yeah, my name is Guo Bing Chen from Intel. So uh, I, I know that uh, yeah, it will be uh, kind of tired when uh, I, I, because we go through so many topics uh, since yesterday. So I, I hope I will not get you sleepy for the next half hours. So uh, yeah, let's start. So my topic is, is about the, the uh, enable generative AI everywhere with the uh, Ubiquitous hardware and open software. So um, uh, um, as we know that AI uh, kind of the very important as of today, and uh, I believe it will be even much more uh, important and be broadly used in everywhere. So uh, a simple question is that uh, it is so important, but uh, how we can get on this boat uh, simply? And uh, I think a uh, quick answer is that you need some hardware and you need some software. So right, so um, when we are uh, talking about AI or deep learning, typically we will refer to uh, uh, G a GPU, right? Um, but uh, actually, uh, AI can be run on also other uh, hardwares like the XPU or even CPUs. So um, uh, from Intel perspective, we provide all these combinations like the. Uh, uh, CPU, GPU, XPU, uh, especially for uh, for CPU, we provide both the uh, uh, server-based GPU uh, CPUs like the GM and the uh, desktop-based one like Core. So um, that is thing. I think all these can be uh, used for uh, our uh, for the uh, our community to run your AI, and uh, I believe that. Um, uh, when we're talking about computation, the most uh, uh, typical one or uh, uh, simple things we can f uh, use or found in the past decade of years is the CPU, right? Yeah, and uh, so I show you some of the uh, uh, brief load map that uh, Intel actually provided based on GM uh, about how it can help on the AI technology. So uh, uh, for the Skylake, actually the, the first uh, generation of the scalable uh, CPUs, it provided the ARS-512, we all know that, to do kind of the vectorization computation. So we can use this kind of instruction to do uh, uh, like the uh, dot production, uh, gene computation, this kind of the computation intensive workload. And uh, after that, uh, we also provide kind of uh, uh, like VNI instruction for int8, this kind of data type. And uh, latestly, we provided a AMX, TMO, this kind of the, uh, new matrix based uh, computation. So uh, um, it's kind of the very specific designed uh, uh, computation module inside CPU that can help us to yeah, run quickly uh, for typical workload like the uh, matrix uh, multiplication. And the uh, matrix multiplication actually is the uh, core computation part in the deep learning or AI uh, uh, model or workload, like the convolution, like the gene, linear, these kind of operations. So uh, uh, that's, that is why uh, Intel provide this kind of the AMX uh, accelerator inside CPUs. So it can also be used um, uh, to accelerate the AI workload. So uh, compared with the, uh, the past AWS 512, uh, when, we, uh, when we run in int8 that type mode, it can provide um, uh, up to eight times faster performance uh, with AMX compared with compare, comparing with the AMX by twelve, and uh, yeah, I think that is the um, uh, a big uh, improvement from hardware perspective. And uh, uh, when we talking about software, you know that um, for AI or deep learning, a uh, typical. Uh, framework today is the PyTorch, right? So um, uh, here I show you uh, uh, kind of the typical ecosystem based on the PyTorch. So uh, we can see we can see that uh, in the middle part is the PyTorch, 
and uh, uh, based on PyTorch, we uh, typically in the uh, community, there's a hugging phase which provide a lot of the module, uh, deep learning models or modules, uh, uh, especially for large learning model. And also can, uh, other uh, libraries like the touch fishing, touch serve, uh, these kind of things. And based on all these, we can then have these uh, uh, the typical models like Llama, GPJ, Falcon. Uh, yeah, those are typically for large language model and uh, also stable diffusion, this kind of thing for the uh, uh, generated uh, AI, right? And uh, uh, here, I also want to mention that uh, from Intel perspective, we also provide a framework level uh, library called Intel extension for PyTorch, which is, uh, uh, we can see that in this Intel extension for PyTorch, we provide the latest optimization on uh, CPU to XPU, these kind of things. Uh, we can think that it is kind of the staging area to have the optimization uh, to, uh, uh, for, for Intel platforms. And also uh, uh, when we push this optimization into PyTorch, we need some time to make it merge in the, uh, in the, in the uh, upstream uh, repo. So besides, before this kind of thing can be landed, fully landed in the PyTorch, uh, we can have this kind of optimization to be used in the ex Intel extension for PyTorch. So uh, here is the more uh, breakdown of the what the Intel extension for PyTorch it is. So uh, it is kind of the uh, extension Library and uh, also open source in the uh, community. So you can you can you can get uh, this library from the this link. And uh, usually it uh, uh, what it it did is the, to try to run as fast as possible on the uh, for la for the typical uh, deep learning models uh, and also uh, for uh, generative AI models like the. Uh, Llama, GPJ, these kind of things. So it means that um, you can you can use Apex, uh, I mean this inter extension for PyTorch to get the better performance. And uh, it also have the very uh, uh, similar API like uh, store PyTorch. So uh, it will um, help you just uh, with kind of the very limited code mod modification in, in the uh, in the uh, application level to tr to to in, uh, include this uh, library, and it also have the uh, very similar uh, release uh, cadence as the PyTorch. So it means that if if PyTorch released the 2.1, uh, iPad will release also a 2.1 version uh, just uh, one or two weeks after PyTorch release. So we can have the, this kind of one one map to uh, get this uh, uh, library. And here also some of the breakdown of the optimizations we, or what we, ha we can have in the PyTorch and the Apex. I will, I, I will not break, break into too much on this part, but, but generally when we're talking about optimization in the PyTorch, we usually refer to uh, three layers, one, one for the operator layer, uh, we need to have the uh, uh, good uh, uh, kernel design in the operator layer. We need we want to have some uh, vectorization, matrix threading, these kind of things. And uh, the second is the graph layer. So uh, uh, we can have kind of the operator fusion. We can have the DO compiler based uh, technology to be used to uh, make a good uh, uh, combined kernel that can reduce the overhead. Yeah, these kind of things. And uh, the final is the runtime, kind of the, we can uh, have the better uh, uh, control of the environment and uh, fully utilize the, the, the power of your system. So, uh, and uh, specific for large language model, we know that large language model actually, the typical thing is that uh, when comparing with the uh, uh, other deep learning models is that it has a bit very big size and uh, it, it have a very special uh, um, uh, MHA design. So, so we have some 
special optimization to make all these things to be to perform as fast as possible, like the special uh, gene design to utilize AMX to uh, get uh, better uh, gene computation efficiency. And uh, uh, we will use, try to use a low precision computation like BFO16 int8 uh, to make the uh, model to be uh, kind of the uh, to, to convert it to be smaller when when run, when run in the uh, hardware. And uh, we uh, also try to uh, use the uh, kind of the indirect access, carry catch, page attention, this kind of the details um, to make the MHA part to be uh, efficient uh, as much as possible. And also some of the uh, uh, graph fusion, this kind of thing, yeah. So with all these uh, optimizations, we can have a, a good performance uh, when we even run on the single uh, CPU. So here I show you some of the uh, data we collected on the AWS, uh, on the uh, AWS instance. So uh, we, we can just uh, look at the uh, white bars. Uh, here it means uh, when we run a, a typical Llama 7 billion model, and uh, we can uh, have the average token latency about uh, 39 or 40, 41, this kind of level. So what, what it, this kind of the latency means, uh, a, a typical thing is that when a human reading speed, it usually means uh, we, uh, uh, 100 million second per token. So it means uh, for uh, for uh, January, when we as a human to read a, 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 an, an article or some sentence, we usually read in the 10 tokens per second. That is, that is the 100 million, uh, million second per uh, latency, this kind of level. So, uh, so here it means uh, for Lama 7 billion, uh, on a single CPU, uh, we can have uh, doubled performance than the human reading speed. So uh, yeah, and uh, when we run, try to run the uh, bigger, two, bi two size bigger model like Llama 13 billion, we can also have the latency to be like the 72, 76, this kind of level still uh, 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 much much faster than a, a typical human reading speed. So it means we, we, when, when you try to have an application uh, uh, for your scenario, uh, it, you can just uh, run this kind of the 7 billion, 13 billion model on the CPU to get a, a better performance than, the use, than, the con than your consumer reading speed. Yeah. And uh, here is uh, another data about the uh, stable diffusion. We know that stable diffusion is kind of the uh, generative uh, AI model to try to uh, run, uh, try to generate the uh, uh, kind of the uh, pictures with text input uh, or these kind of things. So uh, when, but typically, uh, we try the the stable diffusion will be will be tra trained to fine tune to your um, to adapt to your scenario. So firstly, when you when we try to run the fine tuning on the four uh, super rapid nodes machine, uh, we can do the fine tuning just in the five five minutes second five minutes. So uh, it means you can even to fine tune. Uh, uh, several run uh, in just uh, one sec, one one hours, so uh, you can have more scenario. Like uh, 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 if you have a service, like uh, I want to do this kind of the star uh, stable diffusion generation, and uh, after that I can uh, I can change in the, the star with different fine tuning. So this kind of the uh, things can be can be do in uh, several in several run up run up the time, yeah. So it can in, 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 yeah improve your uh, response rate to your uh, users. 
And uh, regarding the inference after you fine tune your uh, models, uh, on the typical super rapid CPU, you can even to do one round of the uh, image generation in just a five second. So uh, it can, yeah, give you some more opportunities when you uh, when you just uh, try to uh, have the uh, stable diffusion generation. In the, in, the, in, the, in the machine and uh, you have several users to hook on the machine to do the generation. So uh, yeah, all these things can be done very quickly. Yeah. So uh, here, all these examples, uh, what I'm trying to show you is that uh, with, with this software, with this hardware, we can uh, have uh, the AI and especially large learning model and the uh, uh, generative AI model like stable diffusion, all these things can be done with the, just the CPU and uh, with the, uh, uh, our uh, software like PyTorch, Apex, these kind of things. So uh, uh, it, I, I, I believe this can give uh, you some of the uh, opportunity to try the AI just on the simple machine of uh, from uh, AWS, from GCP, this kind of the, uh, cloud uh, platforms. So uh, you can easily to try the AI solutions. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think that is most probably my presentation today. So if you want to try the things, you can, uh, e you can, you can pin to this link or you can send me an email to uh, if you have any uh, question or follow up materials you want to know. So, yeah. Any questions? Or okay. So I think we can today, yeah.